Gaia continued to monitor the courier. Soon it launched its comm drone. She plotted its sensor range, the FTR limit, and the speed of the drone. There would be a four hour window in which the drone was off the Kukan sensors before it could go to FTL. She spun up Gungir Delta 27, ran system checks, and targeted the drone, two minutes past the Kukan sensor envelope. Then she prepared Gungnir Delta 22 and 47, just in case. Less than three hours later, the drone left sensor coverage of his mothership and Holon's more capable explorer ship. They rerun the plot. No adjustments needed. For a brief instant, several femtoseconds, she considered alerting General McComb as to her plan, but he was asleep, his first post-stasis. Light neurological damage could occur if he was woken from that. Nothing serious. He would have migraines for a week while his body repaired itself. She decided not to wake him. No lights were in danger. Yet. Solid matter could not enter an FTL aperture within a star system's quantum pool, which for some reason scientists had yet to discover did not always correlate with a star system's gravitational shadow. But FTL apertures could be opened anywhere in a star system to allow energy to pass, such as radio or plasma beams. All UTC comm units larger than a personal handheld have miniature aperture generators to allow for FTL communication within the star system. From all evidence, so did the Kukans. Energy weapons were limited to a light speed radius. After one light second, energy bleed began to drastically reduce their effectiveness. Delta 27 was more than four light minutes away from the courier ship's drone when it fired its plasma beam, right into its FTL aperture. Less than four utter seconds later, the drone was obliterated by the plasma beam. Gaia smiled as Gungnir 27's main barrel began to cool. She prepared a report for General McComb detailing the main gun of Gunga 27 as fully operational. Secondary, tertiary, and missile batteries would still need to be checked, however. <laughs>